Back to my channel, stand up comedian and Bravo Television, namely Vanderpump Rules super fan Jolene Lenz, are here to talk about tonight's episode of Vanderpump Rules season 11, episode four The Dog Days of Scandal. I think it's the Dog Days of Summer, but I have renamed it The Dog Days of Sandoval. It feels like we were just here, you guys. If you are joining us live, please smash that like. If you are joining us, after we are live, hello, future watchers, and please smash the like. Let's set a like goal for 300, okay? Something small. See if we can get there. You guys, if you're new to the channel, what we do here is I roast, I recap, we take a comedic look at all things Vanderpump Rules, all right? I am very opinionated. You guys know that. But that doesn't mean you have to have the same opinions as me. Um, you can have a different opinion and sound off in the live chat or the comment section, and we can all just agree to disagree. That's my opinion! Oh, Tamara, she's such a pleasant woman. Yes. Um, so please, if you are joining live, uh, sound off in the live chat. I love to hear from you. Molly, thank you so much for becoming a new member. Um, I think I talked about this last live, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, if you guys want to support the channel further, you can do what Molly did, become a member of the channel or check out my Patreon or send a super chat when we're live. I'll highlight your comment. Uh, you can send a super thanks after the video posts or hit me up on the Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. Follow me on social media, all those wonderful things. But really, liking and subscribing is more than enough, and I appreciate you all being here. Steven, and we're back. Okay, you guys. Uh, we had a great live earlier. If you missed it, make sure you check it out. We talked about the latest episode of Rachel Goes Rogue. She went really rogue. And we talked about the now what is becoming infamous interview that Tom Sandy Butt did with the New York Magazine, New York Times Magazine. And Gertie from The Real Housewives of Miami has sounded off um, about this interview and Tom's comparison of Scandaval being on media levels of like the O.J. Simpson trial or George Floyd. And Gertie um, so wonderfully stated, um, sir, during Black History Month, please stop. During any month, I would say stop. But definitely Black History Month for him to make a comparison like that or to even bring up George Floyd is so gross and just shows how delusional this man is. There are so many other comparisons like Tiger Woods, you know, uh, in his cheating scan, uh, scandal or when Brad Pitt cheated on Jennifer Aniston with um, uh, Angelina Jolie or any of the other cheating things that hit major, major news and people were talking about forever. You're not the first celebrity to get um, press and bad press for being a cheater to your pumpkin eater. You won't be the last. This isn't the biggest thing we've ever seen. It just so happened that it was rather big in the reality TV world. But if you look at the large scheme of like, you know, pop culture news and fame and uh, celebrity in Hollywood, there have been lots of cheating scandals and there have been lots of people whose feet were held to the fire months upon months and are still stalked by the paparazzi. So you're not that important. Calm your boner. And yes, we use celebrity in quotes. Okay, sir. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Love Pinks has just finished watching the replay from earlier and so glad you're back to watch again, you guys. So I just got done. Thank you. Uh, Love Pink and everybody uh, in the chat. So I just got done watching the episode, obviously. And I just got done on my last live saying, you know, I'm still giving Vanderpump Rules a chance. And I will say this episode was infuriating and it was also boring. It lost my attention very early in the episode. If this is just going to be a season where Lisa Vanderpump is begging people and manipulating them with Tom's emotional and suicidal manipulation to hang out with him or he'll hurt himself. I don't want to watch. I, someone had a wonderful, wonderful tweet. Let me see if I can pull it up here. And it made so much sense and it's putting things in perspective and we got to get back to we can't, we shouldn't have to feel guilty. Should, the cast shouldn't, the fans shouldn't for one man's bad behavior and the fact that he can't take ownership of said bad behavior and wants to create a narrative to be a victim. All right. Um, this whole episode was Tom Sandy, but being a victim. 
And he's like 90. He's too old to do this. And we shouldn't have to feel bad because we're not going to allow that to happen. We as fans watch the show. We know what's going on, Tom. We see things. All right. Own it. Live in your truth. Your truth is you sucked. You did a really shitty thing. And if you would, you know, have some humility, show some honesty and contrition, like um, Lisa Vanderpump said when you were screaming at her last episode, this all would everything dies down and time heals all wounds and all the beautiful things. But you, you won't take accountability. Even when you're crying, you're like, oh, I'm sorry. You still want to be the victim. All right. And we shouldn't have to, against our better judgment, um, have to be almost bullied into, well, do you want him to die? Nobody wants him to die. Jesus, calm down. Oh my God. But I'm also worried about Ariana. I'm also worried about Katie. I'm also worried about Rachel Raquel. I'm also worried about us having to watch this shit week after week after week. Ah, <sighs> so we have this, <laughs> excuse me, this mediocre middle-aged man on a reality show who's basically holding us all emotionally hostage and if we don't somehow just cease and desist on on talking about this um then we're horrible people and he's going to die he's not going to die he's fine all right um okay i'm trying to find this tweet here i'm just ugh, this episode frustrated me so you're going to get, not that I was going to say, you're going to get super opinionated Jolene, but I don't think there's a middle ground opinionated Jolene. I think I'm just always really, really opinionated. And uh, <laughs> so I don't know if that made any sense. Oh my gosh. How come I can't find this tweet? Is it this one? No. Okay. We are going to find it, you guys. Uh, mm, okay. Okay. Well, basically, I think the person was saying, if Lisa Vanderpump in production was that concerned, I'll just paraphrase, with Tom Sandoval and his mental health, why did they have him film? Why didn't they cease filming and get him into therapy right away? Why was Rachel Raquel the only one to go to treatment? All right? Give me a break. Give me a break. Miss me with all this. I don't feel bad one day of my life. I'm never going to. All right? Just like Ariana said, this man took no one else's mental health into consideration. Obviously, no one wants him to hurt himself. But why do we have to go to the worst possible scenario other than just owning your truth, bro? I don't want to be fully Lisa Rinna on this, but own it. Own it. Name them. Name them. Name the times you were really feeling this way, Tom. Because I even talked to my husband about it. And my husband is a, he's not a fan of the show, of Bravo. He's like so cash about this. And he goes, wasn't that dude on tour nonstop, like making jokes and partying? And I was like, yes, yes. So at alleged time, how come only at the time when people were holding his feet to the fire and holding him accountable, did he have these, you know, um, ideas in his head, allegedly? How come he was able to tour and do all, give me a stop, please stop, please stop. Here's another um, tweet that I liked uh, about Schwartz. So uh, shout out to this person on Twitter. Uh, Schwartz conspires with Sandoval to make Ariana look like a bad girlfriend. Jokes about Raquel being into men that are taken in front of Ariana's face. Let Sandoval and Raquel use his place as a fuck pad. <laughs> Makes out with Raquel purely to hurt Katie. And then also Schwartz, but I'm just a little baby. But I'm just a little baby. Um, Love. People on Twitter are killing it. Shout out to... Rex Weed on Twitter says, if Tom, as he said in this episode, really believed everyone wanted him to go away, wouldn't he have, oh, I don't know, not toured the country eating mushrooms and performing karaoke songs referencing the people he hurt? Huh? <laughs> you guys, uh, this is ridiculous. This is, uh, it just, you can't be doing this to a loyal fan base who stood by this for episode for seasons eight and nine of your show. Please don't do this to us. Don't do this to the new fans. Don't do it to any fans. I mean, uh, dude, why is everyone purposely misunderstanding me? Uh, Michelle Fox says. <laughs> but really, uh, the tweet I can't find, but that I paraphrased just summed it up perfectly. If this man is really on the brink of hurting himself, take him off the show and get him into treatment. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Cause really uh, the onus is on Lisa Vanderpump, the production company and Bravo, because uh, you know, you're kind of allowing this to happen and you're, you know, profiting 
off of it. If in fact he is going through a mental health crisis, you're profiting off of and exploiting that mental health crisis. You realize that, right? So bullying the cast members into forgiving him before they're ready, before enough time has passed, before we're even on fucking episode five, <laughs> shouldn't be what you're focusing on. You know, oh, ridiculous. Um, Jens, thank you so much for the first super chat of the live. Jen says, uh, since Tom is a poster man for civil rights now, that he has compared himself to George Floyd, when will his statue be erected? Um, about the time, uh, I mean, he's, he's, he erects a statue in his pants, a mini little statue in his pants every night um, when he's allegedly depressed. But exactly, he's the he's a civil rights... Uh, <laughs> Oh my God, this guy. And just like Gertie said, from Real Housewives of Miami uh, and during Black History Month. I mean, it's just so, this man is so willfully ignorant. He's just such a walking pity party and a narcissist. Let's not pretend. I know the term is overused now, but this is like, it's pretty obvious, right guys? It is. Come on, come on. Um, allegedly, apparently, remember everything I say is true except for the parts that are false. Everything's alleged for entertainment purposes only. Tom Sandoval has apologized for his George Floyd comparison to Scandoval. Um, my intentions, he says on his story, which is always, you know someone's real, real sorry when they apologize on their Instagram story. A mode of communication that disappears within 24 hours unless you save it in a highlight that nobody fucking looks at, okay? Unless you're guilty of something and then someone might search it. He says, my intentions behind the comments I made in New York Times Magazine were to explain the level of national media attention my affair received. The comparison was inappropriate and ignorant. I'm incredibly sorry and embarrassed. Go away, Tom. Go get some help. Get rid of this man. I am not enter the least bit entertained by him anymore. Does anybody put in the chat? Feel free to sound off. Let me know. This is it's not entertaining. He's he ruined the show. He ruined the show. He couldn't just be a villain and live in that. He has to be a villain and want a pity party. Well, you don't get both, Tom. Chickenhead, thank you for the super chat. Chickenhead says you are 100 percent correct. If he's having any issues, he needs to stop filming and get help. Poor me, poor me, poor me. Another one. You know, lay off the boozies. So he says he's sober. Lay off the shrooms, the boozy, the molly, all anything you might be inserting or sniffing into your nose on purpose or an accident and get help, Tom. Jens, thank you so much. Says, as a cyst male, he is all knowing. Oh, the cyst male. Ah, he just knows all. He knows so much that he really knows nothing at all. It's crazy. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Kirsten, thank you so much. Says, struggling with wanting to end his life, but tells someone, Rachel, going to the same, to leave a mental health facility. Right. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So, hmm, you're going through a mental health crisis, but yet you shared intimate details and exploited two women you were intimate with, Ariana and Rachel Raquel, their mental health crises put it on a platform, whether it be a podcast with Howie Mandela or episode of Vanderpump Rules, without their consent, shared private information, exploited it, used it to manipulate others, whether it be for pity towards you or pity towards someone you loved who wanted to come back to the show, which ultimately fell back on you. And now we're supposed to feel bad for you. No. Mm -mm. I don't. Sorry. Don't feel bad for you. Go get some help if you're really dead. That's sad and upset. You might have to go to the hospital. You know, we've all been there once before. You might have to go there. Um, but you wanted Rachel Raquel to leave the hospital. <sighs> Whiny baby villain to the max. So this episode was beyond infuriating. Lisa Vanderpump continues to have the worst takes on Vanderpump roles. I love what Lisa does for dogs. I hate what Lisa does for this show. What she brings to this show is a tired, played out, worn out, misogynistic view of uh, humanity in general. All right? No. She's going to have Sheena and Lala over to her house to make them cry and have a pity party for Tom Sandoval because a poor widow baby had a hard time. Lisa, you yourself told him. You created this reality, Tom, and then he yelled at you. Quit letting problematic man babies ruin 
good takes you could have. Stop bringing these women in who need time. Everybody needs time. Listen, this lady needs to be supporting her friend Ariana. She does not need to be worried about Tom Sandoval. Sheena, stop it. So Sheena cries and she's like, but I did reach out to him. <sighs> and then all of a sudden later in the episode, he was such a good friend to me. When? When, Sheena? That one time in episode or season one when the some of the women like Stassi didn't want you on the show and he allegedly pulled you in and was like, come on, you can, you can get in the picture too. Oh my God. What did he do for you? There is no reason these women have to be siding with or placating this man, baby victim, Tom Sandoval, in lieu of a good friend like Ariana. If Ariana is one of your best friends, then Tom Sandoval can't be. I'm sorry. That's how it is. Who's there to pick you up when you're crying? You have to like break the friendship down. Who's there through breakups? Who's there when you need them? Who are you going to call and have girls night with and cuddle with when, you know, Rob breaks up to you with a uh, breaks up with you and allegedly wants to have a threesome in your words with Billy Lee. Okay. She was on her podcast saying an ex-boyfriend of hers around a certain season that she was dating Rob wanted to have a threesome with Billy Lee. Okay. And then Billy Lee went on to say, she didn't want to have a threesome with me. And she was like, no. My boyfriend at the time did. Sheena, who are you going to call? It's not going to be Tom Sandoval. Give me a break. Give me a break. He cannot be that good of a friend. Okay? He cannot be that good of a friend. Uh, oh, thank you, dog mom, Laura. Thank you. Where is Ken? <laughs> He's much harder on the... Let Ken deal with him. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Ken was probably like a Tom uh, when he was younger because Lisa explains him as a dog and she had to whip him into shape. But listen, that doesn't work. Okay. Problematic men have to fix themselves. They can't rely. That's a very old take to like, it just takes a good woman to break a bad man. Like he's a damn horse or something. No, he's got to seek help himself and come back a self-actualized, self-aware person. Why does it have to fall on women? We are not responsible for problematic men. We're not responsible to save them. We're not their mommies. Even their mommies don't have to save them. They are their own men. They stand on their own dicks every day. Sometimes they stand them and insert them in the wrong people. Okay? So stop it. Stop it. If you can put your dick in all these other places, surely you can put yourself into some good therapy. Surely you can put yourself into some, you know, self-awareness. Surely. Sure. Okay. Alex, thank you so much for the super chat. Love the new logo, Jolene. And Tom and his friends are losers. Oh, I wish I had that clip on this uh, branding on StreamYard. But yeah, Alex, you're exactly right. They're losers. Oh, now I got to get the clip because it's too good. Um, yes, my no offense, all offense. It's so cute. I want to put it on merch and I want to wear a sweatshirt that says no offense, all offense with said cute logo. Let me know if anyone would be interested. Um, first, we'll play. Uh, nothing happened. You did it. Nothing happened. You did it. Happened. You did it. And then, as Alex would say, Tom and his friends are losers. Because they're losers. <laughs> Thank you, random teenage girl on Judge Judy 20 years ago. Because they're losers. They really are. They really are. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Judge Jolene. Okay, you want that on a shirt? Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Um, D. Marie, exactly. It's like the saying, if he pulls your hair, he likes you. No, if he pulls your hair, he's a little dickhead and he needs to learn how to treat a lady. All right? So Sheena and Lala are crying. They're like, Ugh. you know, Lala is, is making some points, being like, yo, no, just the other day, this dude is out in the back alley of Sir calling me a narcissist. So no, Lisa, I don't want to. And then Lisa's like... <laughs> I just know he's going to hurt himself. And it is sad that he has manipulated Lisa, but she's been manipulated with less, unfortunately. And um, with this loss of her brother, I think it's really fogging Lisa's judgment. So I have tons of empathy and compassion when Lisa said, I never thought I'd be in a situation um, with, with suicide with her brother. 
that breaks my heart because no one ever thinks they're going to be there. So of course him saying this and don't think he didn't know what he was doing. And how dare he put this on Lisa Vanderpump and put this on any of us. What an asshole. You are such an asswipe, Tom Sandoval. You are just a fucking dork. You suck. There aren't enough cold baths in the world to save you from yourself. So I feel for Lisa in that regard. But even when it's not something serious like this, she always seems to find her way to the problematic men, you know, to just a bad take rooted in internalized misogyny. And this, oh, can this show be fun again? Jeez. I mean, ugh. Tom, you're laughable. Look at you. Let us laugh. Let us have a good laugh. Just understand your place in the universe. <sighs> Uh, so now Lisa's like, you have to go hang out with Tom or he'll die. And we're like, oh, Jesus Christ. There are people dying every day. This motherfucker ain't one of them. He's not one of them. I don't care what you he's not. Okay. Again, if he is that on the brink, get him to treatment, get him, get him help, get him to, I don't want to watch him. I don't want to watch him. That's exploitive. I don't, I don't, I don't want to watch him. No. And if you're making money off him, being in this shape, shame on you. Get him off my screen. Get him and them crazy eyes off my screen. Steven says, tonight on Watch What Happens Live, Andy pulled the audience. Can you have empathy for Sandoval while still remaining Ariana's friend? 77% said yes. I saw that. Do you agree? Yes. I think you can have empathy if you think someone's struggling. Let's, let's say they, you know, I have empathy for the man that he's this fucking lost, that he's this clueless that he wants his life to go down this road, that he's this willfully in ignorant. I think what a shitty existence. Ugh. and that's where my empathy ends. You know, you don't have to baby him. You don't have to make him your best friend again. You can go, oh God, I just, ugh, sucks to be you and move on. So yeah, I think you can still be Ariana's friend. No one's asking anyone to actively bully this man. Nobody, no one has said, get out there and make sure his life is miserable. He did that. He has created all these problems for himself. There's not one person who's like, I have a website called www.keeptomdepressed.org. Nobody cares that much. We're just like, go away then. Go get some help. You're ruining the show. Honestly, you're ruining the fucking show. You're ruining the show. This show sucks now. I just got done saying I still had hope. You shit on this show, Sandoval. Like fucking can't buy me love scene where Patrick Dempsey's character goes into the arcade and his friend Ronald, no, he's Ronald. Ronald Miller goes into his friend, tries to make up with him after he literally shit on his house. He threw shit with the popular kids on his house. And the guy's like, you shit on my house, bro. You shit on my house. And that's what you did. You shit on the show. You shit. Yeah, I pity the fool. I pity the fool that really thinks this man gives a shit about anyone but himself and his stupid spray tan and his dumb karaoke. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, you're ruining the fucking show, you asshole. I can't stop swearing because I'm just so... Ugh, the rumors and the nastiness. The rumors and nastiness about her? Well, what can do that? Do you I know what? You want me to go there with her husband? Mm. I miss what's-her-face already. What's her name? Monica. Where's Monica Garcia when you need her? That was lighter than this shit. Jesus. I mean, ugh. You guys, these are the men we feel sorry for? I don't want to, like, kill the vibe, but Raquel has a type. What's the type? So Brock, Tom, be careful tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a type for blood? Men that are taken. <laughs> <laughs> ugh, I am fired up tonight with Diamond because it's like you're fucking ruining the show. The show is perfectly fine. You are a dummy. We are not, like, ugh, God, it's, it's this guy. It's like, no one's expecting you to be the smartest or the bravest or the kindest. Just own your villainess. And then we got to see this girl. Oh, my God. Thirsty thirst alert. I can't, Billy Lee. I wanted to give you a chance. I really did. But when Tom's in the bathtub, so they go to a, a cold bath. Why does everyone go to therapy? You don't need cold water. You need self-actual. You need to be helped here. You need cognitive behavioral therapy, sir. Okay? whatever that's called. Um, you need something else. And they're like, let's go to a cold bath. And he's like, okay, dude, let's go. And then they go and he's like, oh, wow. Wow. That's going to fix you. Oh, great. Uh-huh. 
oh my gosh, seriously, really? You'd probably be be better getting Reiki like Jax did with that lady he wasn't cheating with allegedly. You'd probably be better off doing that. And then, then, then Billy Lee's like, oh, oh, oh. like she's like reacting to him in the tub. I'm like, what are you doing? Billy Lee, go do comedy. Stop this, Billy Lee. Billy Lee wants back on the show and Tom needs a friend. And it's so evident. What do they have in common? Once they may or may not have hooked up or may have, according to Sheena, she says they probably did. <sighs> but just watching, uh, you know, Billy Lee be like, and you're making it worse, Billy Lee. You're fucking this up too. Because I just remembered in this episode, she was like, yeah, they're so hard on you, Tom. Billy, shut up. He already feels bad enough for himself. We don't need you. We need, he needs friends to stand by him and go, listen, Tom, it's going to get better, but you have to make it better. All right. You can't be with these what about is what about Lala? She's a narcissist. What about Katie? She's a bitch. What about Lisa? She's rich. You know, there's no what about isms. It's just Tom. It's just you got to focus on you, Tom. That's it. And you should you should be good at that. So then we got Billy like one oh, point thing. Billy, shut up. Billy, I need you to stop it. Oh, my God. I'm probably going to meet Billy at an L.A. comedy show and I'm going to have to tell her to shut up to her face. <laughs> I don't want to be mean to you, Billy. I want to like you, okay? You're a woman, comedian, like, come on. I want to, we see each other. But you are fucking this shit up. Okay, Chickenhead PK Neely says, if Bravo is watching, he needs to get help, full-time inpatient. Yeah, if he's this sick and nobody can just hold him accountable as a grown-up man, then he needs to go to hospital, the hospital. ASAP, P-I-M-P, like now, tomorrow, yesterday, soon, forever. He needs to go. This is ridiculous. So there's Billy in her bikinis, and there's Tom just like with his crazy eyes. I mean, what is with this the intensity of these creep adelic eyes? You know, what kind of guy gets to keep his job after yelling at the boss with creepy eyes, taking no accountability for anything? Oh my gosh. I mean, this is Tom Sandal. This is how strong this man is. He's, I'm not a strong man, Jojo Siwa, but I do know how to get carried on a TV show. Every show he's done, he's been carried by a woman. He has made himself a career on the backs of women or with women on their back. And him, you get it. He's probably the one on his back. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. He's not going to put in any effort into the sex. You'd have to do it all. Reverse cowgirl, reverse cowboy up, down, in between. Oh, my God. This is who this man is. And you know what he's doing now? He's mad at Jojo Siwa. And he's calling out production. He's going, they made it seem like then Jojo Siwa uh, got off the show before uh, lasted longer than I did. She didn't. Tom, she carried you. You are not. You can't even be grateful. Oh, my God. You're the worst. You're the worst. Shout out to Jojo Siwa. Chickenhead PK Neely, thank you for the super chat saying 5150 hold like Britney. <sighs> He's, oh, he's worse off. Like, he's just, oof. ooh, 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 mm, mm, mm. Uh, Kirsten says they're trying to make Billy happen again. Just like Fetch. Guess what? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Hi, Variant. Um, hey, Lavender Girl. Uh, Yvonne is so right. He still thinks he can control. Yes, because he had that privilege for so long. Uh, so yes, Yvonne, you're exactly right. So he's like, well, there's no way he's had the privilege. And the minute he doesn't have the privilege of a good edit and he has to sit with his own shit and his own behavior, he's like, oh, I'm not going to do this. It's like, Tom, treat it like a karaoke tour. Cause you sure thought this whole situation was funny on tour. But the minute the cameras are back on, you're like, I might possibly, maybe I've thought of, uh, what would it be like if I wasn't here? It's like everybody thinks like that occasionally. Sir, stop. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. So we have the bathtub scene, which was just atrocious because Tom couldn't go to James Kennedy's pool party. And rightfully so. He doesn't deserve a pool party right now. So he's like, hey, Billy Lee, what are you doing? And she's like, never, nothing, ever. I'm available for filming. Come to my comedy show. And... um. They're in a tub and he's like, it's super cold. And he's like, <gasps> and he puts his face in and she's like, oh my God. Tom. Tom. 
Tom. And Tom's like, it's okay, Billy. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Billy Lee said this episode, I didn't know if we were going to have you. Or how did she put it, you guys? She was like, I don't know if you were going to make it or, or something. I'm like, Billy, mellow, dramatic much? Stop it, Billy. Are they paying you extra for this? I mean, this is way over the top. I didn't think you were going to make it. I didn't think we were going to have you. <sighs> Billy, Billy, I'm so mad. I'm more mad at you almost, Billy. I'm not, but I just, <sighs> I'm mad. And you got, you know, your tots out. Uh, he doesn't deserve to see your wonderful tots. Put them away. Put them away, Billy. Oh, God, Billy. Ugh. okay. So then James Kennedy is getting ready for his pool party. Him and Allie are very excited, you know, to have their pool party next to the airport, allegedly. He's got a little something about her floaty. They're all jumping. Well, him and Tom Schwartz, he gets dad Bob, Sh Bob Schwartz up on the garage to jump into the pool. And James is like, yeah. And Tom's like, I'll do it. Nobody yikes me. And then he jumps off the garage and Katie's like, ugh, boring. Bring a book. Before the party starts, we do see Ariana and Katie talking at Ariana's house. And they're like, what should we wear? Are we going to go to Tahoe? Hell no. Katie said she'd rather eat a jean jacket. And right now I'd rather be a jean jacket than a viewer of this damn show. And I feel so bad for these two women who have to go through having Lisa Vanderpump and production yet again, saving problematic men and spending a whole season trying to babysit how people's feelings and gatekeep people's feelings on Tom Sandoval. Let them hate him. Oh, well, eventually everything, like I said, eventually with time, things will, you know, like Jenna was saying on Watch Happens Live, time does. Time is the ultimate healer. Either it'll heal it or it won't. So there's only two things that can happen. All right. But trying to push this reconciliation is just so gross. So, um, yeah, so they're at the pool party and they're having a great time, mostly because Tom Sandoval isn't there. Tom Schwartz is, you know, being Tom Schwartz, he shows up in his grandma's sunglasses and Lala's trying to get information out of Allie about James's sobriety. Apparently James has been sober from alcohol for three months, mazel. However, the THC is a flowing, honey. It is. As Allie's like, I don't want to share the details of why he got sober, which I will say, Allie, as a sober person myself, is a wonderful way to answer that question because it is James's story to tell. And I love how Allie navigated this. Look at that, Tom Sandoval and Tom Schwartz. Allie is like a fetus compared to you old men. And somehow she has the emotional maturity uh, far greater than you two could ever imagine. You know, so how did the fetus know how to navigate life and her significant other's, you know, addiction and questions regarding that in such a beautiful and smooth way. And you two are just stunted. So there's James just like, yeah, I'm sober. And he's just, you know, he's California sober. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Whatever. And Lala's like, so what was his bottom? What was his rock bottom? What was his low? And Allie's like, you know, I'm not going to share that, but you can talk to him. He might share that with you. And I was like, oh, Allie, so beautiful. She is. She's such a smart young woman. I hope she's being treated right. And I hope that, um, I hope everything's good in Allie's world. She's a wonderful cat mom and now dog mom. Um, yeah, Steven, California sober and sober curious in one photo. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So then, um, Schwartz, you know, who again is like, how come nobody likes me? It's cause you're a dickhead too, Schwartz. And you lied and no one can trust you. All right. And you're a victim and you're a wee little baby. So then after this conversation that Lisa has, I feel like Lisa, I feel like I'm watching a bad season of Big Brother, the show I love. If you guys um, know, I love to hate sometimes. <clears throat> and production just gets overly involved in it and ruins it. And that's what's happening here. Is Lisa Vanderpump had a conversation with Lala earlier in the day where she made Lala and Sheena cry for Tom Sandy Butt, who doesn't deserve anybody's tears. And then all of a sudden, Lala is rethinking her whole life. She's like, oh, I shouldn't be so hard. And, you know, it's either I'm really mad and projecting or I'm like 
<coughs> excuse me, guys, or I'm in a corner in the fetal position. And she's opening up so much to a man who doesn't deserve any of her emotional honesty or vulnerability because he refuses to have any himself. <sighs> All right. We need a small commercial break so I can get rid of this cough. BRB, guys. Hit that like while you're waiting. <laughs> No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The rain didn't mean a thing. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. The rain didn't mean a thing. Stop! Just stop! Whoa, whoa, whoa. When I judge you, you will know it. Wow. That was better. No. Women's stories matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They just they matter. They yeah. Do. yeah. It sounds uh, a little pretentious. You know what the word pretentious means? Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> better? That is disgusting. I that is disgusting. I'm not the one that started disgusting. it. I'm disgusting. telling you what I heard. Disgusting. It is disgusting, isn't it? Disgusting. Disgusting. Yes. disgusting. Whoa, 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 diamonds, new furniture. Oh, no, you don't, princess. Stop filming. Whoa, 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 the ring didn't mean a thing. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you, out of your mind? No, I need the, the ring didn't mean a thing to you. Okay. Ring didn't, get up here with my voice. Ring didn't mean a thing. To you. One more time. Ring didn't mean a thing to you. What are you, an idiot? The ring didn't mean again. The ring didn't Here we mean. Go. The ring didn't mean a thing to you. Millions of Americans suffer from psychological disorders and are not getting the proper care. Now you tell me what's so funny about that. Now you tell me what's so funny about that. Oh, we always love some Jerry Blank. All right. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. So Lala, this is this was a moment for Tom Schwartz and Lala to join forces. And I see what's happening here. You guys probably see the writing on the wall. They are jelly of Ariana because also Schwartz is like, oh, no, she's the queen bee. Me and Tom used to be the two queen bee. And Lala's like, yeah, 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 right, right. So now it was their way of hating on Ariana. Listen, Tom Schwartz, you can't even say her name properly. You're like, Ariana. It's Ariana. That's her name. It's not Ariana. So all of your opinions are null and void. All of your views. You haven't even taken the time to learn how to say her name. And then Lala's like, oh, yeah, right? Like, she's the boss. Oh, and it was so gross watching them both come together to just hate on Ariana's success and boundaries and make it seem like it is somehow a huge ego and, you know, things have just been handed to her and she's just this, you know, mean girl and calling shots. She's calling shots for herself and her boundaries. It's up to you if you want to, um, you know, the whatever decision you want to make is up to you. She's not saying you have to do this. She's saying, here are my boundaries. This is what I'm doing, which is actually very healthy for someone who's just been in a situation like her or for anyone in general to state their boundaries. Lala, you forget you had a whole fucking season where you told people, I won't talk to you if you talk to Randall. You said Tom Sandoval is just like Randall and he's dangerous. And now you're like, oh yeah. I mean, ugh, I didn't get all the love Ariana got. So now I'm going to shit on her. It's just so gross. So then you know, she's like, she compares Tom Schwartz to her dad. Stop. Please stop. Lala, don't do that to your dad. Okay. She goes, yeah, there's, it's, I mean, you're just, you're like a people pleaser. That's a horrible thing to be. That's horrible to tell him that what he does is a good thing. He plays all the sides, which means he's on none of the sides and he has no one's back and he's out for himself and Tom. That's not a good friendship. It's horrible. It was like propaganda. It literally, they're just, it's just propaganda they're spewing at us. And some people are starting to believe it. And I hate looking at the comment section. Um, Sometimes on like Instagram and stuff. Because people are like, yeah, Ariana's the problem now. Oh my God. 
I'm just, I, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't really do that. Uh, yes. And Schwartz still finds a way to, in, to insult her. He's like, well, you are like the most beautiful person I've seen in real life. I mean, I don't want to have sex with you. Oh God, my dick. I would cut my dick off before then. Like it doesn't work. Uh, shriveled little guy. Fingers in the mouth. Nervous. Remember when you said that Lala fingers in the mouth. Yeah. Um, and then he was like talking about her lips. I mean, uh, you can give him grace for the horrible things that he has going on in his life, like the stuff with his brother's health and his dad's health. But that doesn't mean you have to absolve him of all the things he does so he never has to evolve as a well-rounded man. Oh, my God. Right, Toby? Lala has different rules for others. Lala made money from... Yes, stop it. Stop this. Stop commiserating with him. And to talk shit about Ariana. She didn't do nothing to you. He had them fawning up. You guys hate each other. Last season, he said horrible things about you, and you said horrible things about him, and now he's, like, love bombing her, like, fake ass, gaslighting her, going, yeah, and you're a great mom. That's not what you were saying, Shorts. That is not what you were saying. Can you guys just apologize for the things you've said without blowing bullshit up each other's bleached bottoms? I'm not. I'm sure only one of them is bleached. Ugh. God, this was painful. So I was like, oh, crap. All right. So then we get the scene I was not waiting for, which is Ariana in the pool with Sheena, Sheena's sister, Katie, and Lala. Can we just cancel the whole show and just do a show with Ariana and Katie and some of their friends? They got to have other friends we can watch because I am so sick of these flip floppers. Then Sheena starts in. <sighs> Sheena, please. Please, Sheena. I don't want to. I don't want to Billy Lee you. I love you, Sheena. I don't want to do this, okay? But this is fucking ridiculous. Now, Sheena's like, oh, I talked to Lisa, and Lisa said that. I love how Lisa told Sheena, don't be a people pleaser, but make sure you please me, darling. You better please me, though, because I have, I want you to be friends with Tom. Lisa, even when Lala brought up a good point about what Sandoval was saying about her and how she's fake and phony and doesn't show her real life. And she's like, oh, that's the worst he said about you, darling. Oh, my God. James has said way worse. Thanks, Lisa. That makes it so much better. So then uh, Lisa has is, has now, you know, gotten into Sheena because Sheena will do what Lisa says. Sheena wants Lisa's approval so bad. And Sheena's always been a favorite to Lisa. And she doesn't want to move out of that favoritism. So now Sheena's like, well... Lisa said that it reminds her of her brother. And Ariana's like, please, no, we're not doing that. Rest in peace, her brother. He is nothing like her brother. He is nothing like her brother. The Tom said, you guys know him. And she was like, but he was such a good friend to me. And I'm like, oh, my God. Just throw away the whole show. Just stop it. I am, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut my own hair. This is, why are they, I feel like, what are they doing to us? What is this? What did, I want to make your show funny. Your show fucking sucks right now. This is so stupid. This is so stupid. What are you doing? What are you doing? I do. When Sheena, I'm gonna need. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pull one of these on her. You got. You got name them. Name them. That what? Name them. Well, name what em. you did was ridiculous. Name them. Uh, not having. Name uh, well, be quiet. So name let em. me talk. Jesus. Name them. Name the times he was a good friend to you. Name them. Name them. Name them. Name them. Okay. Fuck. Get Sutton over here. Get Sutton and some of her rich friends. Erudite. Whatever those are called. Friends. I'd rather watch them. I don't want to watch this anymore. This is ridiculous. This is so ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> oh, Ariana's like, please, please. No. Very different. She was like, oh. And then... Sheena like sat there in the pool like <sighs> and Ariana's like okay no what like uh and Katie is just she Katie's like I can't get drunk enough to hang out with you people you people are so dumb I'm so easy to manipulate please stop this is ridiculous justice for Katie justice for Ariana justice for this damn show and this jean top is so cute on Katie. Oh, my God. So she was like. Mm. Mm. 
Tom was such a she's like Tom was such a good friend of me. Sheena, please stop. Sheena, no, you this you're better than this, Sheena. I don't want to not be friends with Ariana, but I also don't want Lisa to be mad at me. Oh. They're ruining the show. Why can't we just let Tom Sandoval be the villain he is? Why do we have to make up a false narrative that he somehow is just emotionally struggling? Well, I bet the people that he hurt are emotionally struggling too. I bet his mom, who he owes $250,000 to, is struggling as well. Stop it, Sheens. <sighs> Toby says Lala and Sheen are suffering from lime <laughs> limelight syndrome. If it's not about them, they can't handle Ariana's limelight. I mean, <clears throat> the smart thing would do be to ride the wave like you had been. You were making money. You were getting views. You got merch. You had so much merch. You bought a house. Ride with the girls. It doesn't, you know, be like the Adam Sandler shit, the Amy Schumer. You know what they do? Whether you like them or not, they bring their friends with them. So they bring all the comedy friends they like and they give them opportunities and they all make money together. Do that. This isn't a solo competition. All right. No one's ever just going to watch a show about Lala. No one's ever going to watch just a show about Sheena. It's an ensemble cast here and they need to accept that. Oh my God. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if Ariana's just like, fuck this. You know, if she keeps getting roles and all that stuff and <clears throat> Broadway and other shows, she doesn't need this. She doesn't need this. NYC girl says Rachel's take on Lisa calling the men over and over. Spot on. Sorry to say she was. No, she wasn't wrong. Lisa does that. She's been doing that forever. It's crazy. Oh, OK. <clears throat> so uh, she is just there crying. <laughs> and then we get to meet Joe. Oh, my God. Kristen Doty's former best. One of her best friends. Everyone's 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 best friend on the show. Um, Joe. And then allegedly she stopped being friends with Kristen Doty the minute Katie and Schwartz were breaking up and just went straight to Schwartz. Joe, Joe from Wisconsin. She loves the Packers wearing her hat backwards. I enjoy that too. Skateboarding, being cool, not wearing much makeup, cutting people's hair in their living room and being like, I'm not like regular girls. Girls are drama. I'm not drama. I'm like super chill and low key. Ugh, I'm so weird. I'm not on crack. People keep saying I'm on crack. And it's like, no, you keep saying you're on crack on social media. So Joe shows up, which I want to like you too, Joe. I really do. You know, you're from Scani, Midwestern girl, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Shout out. Border battle. We can make it work. But then I remember little Miss Joe is the same Joe that was with Tom and Tom and Rachel Raquel when they went to Big Bear on the low when the affair was going on. And Joe and Tom are trying to pretend like Tom Schwartz, like, oh, you know, like, we weren't ever really anything. She never lived with me, even though she stayed here. We just, you know, whatever. Yeah, Joe. No, Joe was a full-on accomplice, too. She was at the concerts with Rachel Raquel. When Rachel Raquel was cheating with Tom Sandoval, Joe knew. Joe was there as Rachel Raquel's new bestie as they both stood with Ariana in the middle of this cheater sandwich while Tom Sandoval on stage. So picture it. Tom Sandoval singing. Joe's here. Rachel Raquel's here. Ariana's here. Ariana's like, hey, girls. And they're like, hey, Ariana, you're the best. She's fucking your boyfriend. But you don't know. Ha, ha, ha. And they had this big secret. That's the kind of woman Joe is. That's who Joe is. So now we got to watch this bitch. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. Oh, and no, I'm so quirky. This is quirky. I'm so weird. I'm not like other girls. I'm not like a regular girl. I'm like a cool girl. I'm like, guys, I scratch my ovaries. Uh, you know, like, uh, I like sports and bad breath. Uh, just another pick me. I wear oversized shirts. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm in a, a recreational kickball league. Oh. <laughs> I 
I drink beer out of a can or a bottle. I'm random. I'm like, oh, God, just. Oh, God. <laughs> so sick of this shit. This is so stupid. It is 2024. Cat Williams says all liars will be exposed. And I'm ready to fucking expose them. Cat, where are you at? We got to expose these bitches. All right. It did happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies. But Jussie Smollett going to keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. <sighs> so then I have to watch Joe. So she's cutting Tom Schwartz's hair, and then here comes fucking Sandoval through the door, and he's like, "Hey guys!" with his intense eyes, like the most Adderall-y Adderall eyes I've ever seen in my life. Bro, take a break, take a break, try a Vyvanse. Oh my god, that is like an epidemic in LA. They overprescribe the Addies to these reality stars, and they're like, Gee. and you're like, he's so angry. Well, I wonder why. I wonder why. You got them all hopped up on Adderall and no therapy. Uh, so he walks in with a fucking kindergartner t-shirt on. And he's like, hey, guys. He brings a cooler. What are you going to the beach? What are you, what are you bringing a cooler? Weird alcoholic dad vibes. Like, you just bring a cooler to your friend's house? Doesn't? I'm pretty sure Tom Schwartz had lots of beer. Okay, I'm trying to find this picture. Of him. So Joe's cutting his hair and he comes in. He's like, hey guys, what's up? It's me, Sandoval. I just woke up. Life is hard. And they're like, hi, Tom. And Joe's like, hi, Tom. I love your shirt. It's so great. And he's like, thanks. Thanks. Okay, just real pleasant. Really pleasant. Tom, you're not going to bring the 90s back. Okay, only I can do that or anyone else. Yeah, I can, I'm, Joe, I can belch the alphabet and I fart too. Pfft. Oh my God, I don't even care, you guys. I wear dirty underwear. I'm so cool. Not like a regular girl. I cut my thongs <laughs> for fun. I don't even know what that means. You guys, stop. Stop. <sighs> so he walks in, he cracks a Coors Light. Even before he's completed a sentence, he's Coors Lighting. And Joe's like, hi, Tom. And Schwartz is like, hey, what's up? I'm just sitting with my legs crossed, getting my hair cut. And then Tom's like, oh, these are your fucking pubes. And it was Tom Schwartz's head hair that Joe just cut. And then Joe's like, yeah, I don't even want to pick it up. I'm a girl. I'm not like a regular girl. I'm not afraid of pubes. I can make pube jokes too. Pew, 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 pube. Oh, God. Is this when he walks in? No. This is their cat looking at. Look at this poor cat. I'm so glad we found out on my live earlier that uh, on No Offense, All Offense today that Ariana has moved out with the dog, Maya, and the sweet little kitty. Animals, <clears throat> they know. Look at the cats. Like, get me out of this fucking place. Look at this dude. I don't deserve this. I'm an adorable cat. What are you doing? What is he doing? He's writing in a notebook. It is wide ruled. Okay? And he can't even fill a page. Get me out of here. Tell him to learn how to clean a litter box. Because first we had Ann doing it, and now he's got some dude. And then he's got Riley, or whatever her name is, his 23-year-old publicist. And nobody's cleaning up my shit, okay? I just want some pets, some scratchies, some treatsies, and someone to clean my shit box. And he doesn't do any of it. What's he good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. <sighs> okay. So then he's just like, hey. And Tom Schwartz is like, hey, Tom. And then Schwartz proceeds to tell Sandoval and Joe, she, she's sticking around because she's a cool girl. She's not like emotional like the other girls. She only cries in the dark by herself when no one's around and says, I didn't cry. Did you cry? Never cry. I don't even cry. I don't even care. I don't, well, you want to keep this casual? I'm so casual. <laughs> I just, I don't have any feelings. Ugh. Girls with feelings, uh -uh, not me. Okay. So Tom Schwartz is like, listen, I had that. Shawnee, that's a that's what we figured out last live through uh, Tom's now infamous interview with New York Times Magazine. He said he doesn't know where Ariana went, but she took the dog and she took the cat. Thank God. And she's suing him to sell that damn house and split the proceeds. Okay. All right. 
So he says, so Schwartz is like, hey, Tom, hi. Oh, fingers in my mouth, fingers in my mouth, nervous. Um, I had talked to Lisa and she said I could, we should go to Tahoe. I should bring people. So I'm going to get a cabin. You're invited. Oh, thanks, man. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I invited everyone else. Um, Katie and Ariana not coming. Yes. No bitch alert. And Joe's like, yeah, right. Mm hmm. And then he's like, I had a, actually had a really good talk with Lala. And, you know, she's, she's, I think she's grown a lot. Okay, stop. Stop. You two are, should not have any say over who's grown, who hasn't, or any judgment towards that since you guys haven't progressed past 1995. Please stop. And then Joe, in her, like, I'm not on crackness, is, judge judy back there and she was like yeah oh yeah well that's i love i just, i love when people make changes like and, and and get better if lala did finally and she looks up to this guy like finally lala's gonna punch you in the throat for that kind of judgment finally what do you mean finally who are you how would you know anything so she's back there yeah like i love when people get get better and they like you know realize stuff finally what are you talking about who are you Where'd you come from? Wisconsin? Green Bay? What's going on, Milwaukee? Why are you talking like this? Hudson, what's happening? Eau Claire. Oh. So then Tom Sandoval obviously just handles this so well, you guys. He's just, he's fucking so chill. He's so chill. He's like, oh, yeah. Lala's grown. Oh, Lala, who fucking the narcissist, her and Sheena, and all the bitches that I want to yell at, but I'm a cis male, so I can't. But if I was gay, I could. And if I was not cis, I could. And if I was a woman, I could. They made all this money off of t shirts and merchandise on me. And guess what? America learned how to treat me the victim shitty because they taught America how you I'm sorry sorry you think Lala and Sheena can get us to do anything what also no you you taught us how to treat you Tom you did you taught us not them oh no no we didn't need Lala and Sheena to tell us how to feel it was a universal feeling Everybody felt like you were a dickhead because you were. You acted like a freaking twat. Okay, you're a twat waffle. Nobody respects you. You drink too much squirt. You get too angry. Your nail polish is dumb. You can't sing. You wear platforms. We don't respect you. You taught us how to do that, Tom. Not these women. But boy... Did he start yelling at the women? Oh, Tom just, he was like, ooh, feels like putting on like a nice pair of comfy slippers I haven't slipped into a while. He was just so angry. The new thing is that, you know, as a cis male. Um, Did you say cis? Is your voice yelled, do whatever you feel entitled to do. But as a cis, as a straight male, if I was a woman, I could do that. If I was a gay male, I could do that. But as a straight male, if I raise my voice, it's wrong. He is a victim, blame me 100% of the way. So I don't believe anything that just came out of his mouth. I think he's full of shit. And he can fuck off. Thank you, Ariane. He can fuck off. He can fuck off. Do you see what is an imp what's important to this man? Is the money. He feels like they made more money than him. He talked about it in the, um, you got to always follow the money in the New York Times Magazine article. He straight up was like, he doesn't feel like he's been able to profit as well with brand deals as others have and deals in general um, after Scandival. Yeah. So he's jealous at the women who have. Mm hmm Yeah. That's what it's about. It's about the money. Same with Rachel Raquel. She did not come back to the show because of her mental health. She didn't come back because she asked them for a raise. They said no. And she wanted a development deal with NBC Universal. That's what it's all about. They don't give a fuck about their mental health, anyone else's mental health. They follow the money. Tom's mad. You know how much he brought up through interviews and since Scandable, how Katie 
and Ariana made this how much money they made on merch for something about her with a restaurant that's not even open yet. You know how Maddie is that Lala had sent it to Daryl merch that bought her house and Sheena had served and all those other merch and podcasts. He's mad about the money. And now he thinks he's a victim. And Sheena and Lala created the narrative that then they brainwashed us with because they're fabulous cult leaders, you know? <laughs> Oh my God. Like the, the, the rulers of twin flames universe over here. And that lady with the HBO cult documentary, the lady, God, God, lady, madam, God, God, mom, mommy, God, you know what I'm talking about? You think Lala and Sheena that we don't have two eyes or one, whatever you got. You don't even need to be able to see. You just hear to pick up on this bullshit and how you should be treated. You're not a victim, Tom, Tom, you're not a victim. You're really not. You're an asshole. Kathy, thank you so much for the super chat. The restaurant should be renamed Tom Tom's Child Development. <laughs> right? Chickenhead, thank you for the super chat. Kathy, yes, Tom Tom Arrested Development. Arrested Development. Yes. Uh, Lisa Miller, I don't either. Lisa Miller says, Jillian, I just don't understand why they're trying to redeem scumbag. Can you possibly explain this insanity to me? Uh, misogyny, the patriarchy, explaining problematic men rather than having them own their shit or get get better. Just forgive them. Blame a woman. You know. I, I, it's the power of the penis. You know? Just a big jelly cyst male. That's it. That's what it all comes down to. That's all they care about. He started a podcast. He's profited off this. Don't play with us, Tom. Just because you're not as good at it. You know, you could listen. Sheena and Lala's podcasts are a million times better than Tom's. Tom's podcast is low quality and he's hiring these friends like that weirdo Jason guy who just has a laptop on his lap that he never uses through the whole podcast. His drummer. And the quality sucks. And he's not good at talking. You can't form a sentence without, dude, lie, no, -uh! come on. Who wants to hear that? Only people who are going to make fun of it, like me, because we have to. That's the only way we can digest it. Because we have to think, this is satire, right? This is a joke. This can't be a real 56-year-old man saying these things. <sighs> so then Joe is sitting there with Tom as Tom, you know, Schwartz is trying to get Tom Sand, he's like, oh, Tom, I don't think that's going to read well. well. If you're this angry and you're basically saying it's their fault and not yours. Uh. And Joe's like, ah, <laughs> I'm so random. You guys, I'm so random. I'm just like, Ugh. you know. And then, okay. I, I don't. <laughs> I'm just like, what? What is happening? What is happening? Ugh. And then we get Allie and James and Sheena and Brock go out to dinner at like a serve yourself restaurant bar. And we get James and Lala and Lala's like, what got you? What was your low point? And you're like, oh, my God, Lala, can we? Oh, I know you're trying here, hon, but, you know, as a fellow sober person, not everyone's going to have the same journey as you. And. Not everyone's going to want to talk about it as much as you. And I don't think she's like, is it permanent? He's like, yeah, I'm permanently not drinking. I think. And it's because I fought with Allie when I was drunk and it was rough. And it's like the same thing that happened with Rachel Raquel. Allie left for two days. Uh. Hmm. And now James, great, awesome. And Allie <sighs> then came back and he was like, I'm not going to drink anymore ever again. But this time it's for me, not for someone else. But it kind of seems like it's still for someone else. Um, and it definitely, you can incorporate other people into it, but it should probably be something new for sure. But maybe James is at that point. I hope he is. However, I don't know if he's just replacing one thing for the next. I'm not sure. I don't have the mental capacity to do that because this 
this fucker's ruined everything. He's ruined the whole show. And he won't stop. And they, they're not going to stop them. We're going to have a whole season of this. No one's going to get to put him in his place. I wish Katie would just punch him. You know, where was Lisa Vanderpump and production and all this when he was, you know, slut shaming Katie, blaming her for Schwartz's mental health, telling her she was a fucking bad person? Where's for, for Lala's mental health when he's saying she's a narcissist and she's horrible and. <sighs> So then we had uh, the date I was talking about, and Allie gets up and serves herself a drink. Awesome. Sheena spews more of Lisa Vanderpump's propaganda that we all have to be nice to Tom Sandoval. And Allie's like, well, he's never really done anything to me, but I I don't necessarily want to be his friend because of how he's treated James. So I'm not really a fan of his, but obviously we don't want anyone to die. Oh, my God. They're just so ruining this now we can't even have a feeling no one on the show can have like an authentic real feeling or process their feelings about this man otherwise he's gonna die this is the height of emotional manipulation this is this should be criminal it's so wrong it's so wrong to weaponize suicide and mental health for pity for some guy on a reality show so that his co-stars talk to him when all they're doing is kind of, no, I've, I haven't seen anyone go yell at him or he, he couldn't even last one, two episodes. We've seen reality stars fall out of favor with their cast or their friend group and have to spend the whole season getting that back. And that Tom should be on a fucking redemption tour. Not us going, well, if we, uh, if, if we hold him accountable like a real adult, he's going to fucking die. I was watching this. And I kept taking breaks. And I was going down to my husband who was watching the wild hockey game, which I'd much rather be watching because I don't know if you guys are into hockey, but the wild Minnesota wild shout out to you. They had a crazy good game last night, two hat tricks for two players. The other team, the Canucks, they had a hat trick, but we don't care. Um, and uh, they only had one and we came back. Um, we were losing like by like three goals in the third period, we scored five goals in five minutes, two hat tricks by two of our players, and we scored the most goals in franchise history, 10 goals. And some franchises might go big deal, but that's a big deal for Minnesota with the state of hockey, and we never get that. So I was like screaming and going, ah, and tweeting and so excited. And then I got to watch this shit. And I could be watching them. They're probably losing because I think they're playing like a really, the Canucks are really good, but they're playing an even better team, I believe, tonight. If I could be watching that. Thank you, my husband's here. I was waiting to watch the third period with Thank you, baby. I appreciate that. <sighs> yes, hockey is cathartic because it's violent. Violent isn't always the answer, but is it the question? Is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, it is. It's great because immediately they're just like, eh, and then they move on with their lives. None of these hockey players pay, play crybaby victim for a whole season and say, the other guys have to talk to me and be my friend or I'm going to die. <sighs> Yep, Amy, and nobody's attacking him. They're just putting boundaries and not putting up with his bitch ass anymore. Thank you, Lisa. Yep. I wish I could be really funny for you guys. I do. But this shit is like so wrong. And then he goes into the press and makes those comments today comparing it to George Floyd. It's, fuck this dude. Fuck this dude. <laughs> uh, it's toxic. Yes, Barbara. Yes. The to it's gloomy. It's dark. It's gross. It's not fun. Okay. On to the best scene of the night, which definitely brought tears to my eyes. Graham Cracker came back and Lisa shines a little more insight. Now, Rachel Raquel says Lisa is lying about this, but Lisa said no. Graham was uh, returned by Rachel's mom and then went to a foster house or something, foster care, a, like a foster family, and then had some biting, which we know he allegedly bit uh, Rachel Raquel's mom, which how do we know she didn't deserve it? No offense, all offense. Um, and then went to a shelter 
Lisa says it went to a shelter and the shelter called her. So what was the reason? What was the reason? I want my Cardi B moment. What was the reason? What was the reason? And I was like, he was at a shelter. He was at a shelter. <laughs> oh, good, Alex. This is my post-show group therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Michelle. <sighs> this dog story is getting real murky. There's just lots of different stories. I don't know what the real story is. Luckily, Graham is reunited with James and James breaks down because he was like, okay, it's a, it's a golden doodle. So everyone in LA, like the most popular dog in LA, you see them everywhere. And every time he saw a golden doodle, he was like, what could have been? And he went on with his day, but you're never truly over that. I can't imagine having a pet that I love Teddy, Buffy, Tilly, and someone just taking that pet from me and saying, you can't be the parents of said pet. And then they go off, fuck up their life, and then leave the pet with a family member who then is like, this one's mean, and then gives it away to a shelter. Knowing that my little sweet fur babies were in a shelter or in a situation where they were just passed around and disregarded would break my fucking heart. So the fact that James broke down like this, it's your family. Like these fur babies are just so much more than just pets. They're family. Their love, that's all they want to give and exude. And, you know, with dogs, it's, you really need, I'm still learning as with having two rescue dogs myself, it's, it's, you have to give do rescue dogs so much and dogs in general, so much love and so much patience, but they need discipline and they need guidance and they, they, they want structure, right? Teddy bear. I mean, it's, it, it's a wonderful, beautiful journey that you can't just give up on and just cast them aside because you're too busy having affairs with problematic old men. You okay, baby boy? You want to go for a walk soon? Don't worry. We're almost done. I promise. I promise. Um, so it just, who leaves a pet? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Shawnee, thank you so much for the super chat. Graham, hippie is home. So then uh, Lisa's like, you can take them. And come here, baby, Teddy. Come here. Come here, baby. I don't have any any treats for you over here, but come here, honey. He's like right by the window, like, mom, it is walk time. It is walk time. I know, baby. Don't worry. Come here. So um then <sighs> that was that was just happy. That was a really happy moment. And we see next episode, we're gonna see how um Allie uh how they adjust. Cause he's like, Well, I have to talk to Allie. Of course I'm gonna take him. He's my best friend. I love him. But um, because he's like, is that graham cracker? Is that Graham Cracker? Who we now know they renamed Hippie. And I just was like, <laughs> can we just have a show around Vanderpump Dogs? I would love to. Is there a Vanderpump dog show? I mean, like a real, not on some weird app, a real Bravo TV, Peacock, right? Peacock. Yeah, I know that's an app, but it's like, you know, we're used to it now. About Vanderpump Dogs and the stories and the workers there and the families and the dog rescues. Can we get that? I'd much rather recap that at this point. There can be a little drama, of course. You know, where they go like punch people that just return their dogs after they're done being puppies. I would love to watch that. Um, so we are going to see, though, um, Allie and James have been uh, doing a great job with Hippie now. Um, but it was a transition, Allie said, because of the cats and because of now Graham has this biting history. So they have to be careful. And, you know, we see James telling Allie in the next episode, he, he just needs training and he does. He really does. He craves that. I doubt Rachel Raquel did much right by this dog. I really do. With how she handled her own life. I can't imagine. She gave him the training and the support and the time that this little guy deserved. So, so happy he's back. But we see that, you know, Allie's got her little kitty she's worried about. They got two kitties. What's his name? Baxter or something? And the other one? And you see Graham like, her. And it is. It's a transition. I mean, still with Tilly. Tilly has been with us since 2010. We we rescued Tilly at the end of 2010. And uh, we just rescued our two dogs, you know, one in August and one in September, I think. And so it's still a transition. But right now I have Teddy on the floor on my my faux fur rug and we have Tilly up here and they're coexisting beautifully, but you do, you know, you see me on live and Tilly, she states her boundaries regularly. She's like, if Teddy gets too close now, Buffy, she's a littler dog. She's only 21 pounds, but Tilly's 6.8 pounds and she's a senior cat. Teddy's 61 pounds. So every time 
this little baby kitty sees Teddy, she thinks, this is when I die, you know? So she has to stand her ground and Teddy, you know, he respects it. Uh, he's like, okay, I'm back. I'm backing up. He's actually scared of 6.8 pound <laughs> Tilly. And um, so it's a transition and I'm happy to hear that the transition has been going really well and that Allie and James have been responsible pet owners who have gotten um, places for the cats to escape to. That's like a big thing I learned that cats need space. They need high spaces, whether it be shelves, scratching posts, places where they can, rooms that are just uh, for them if you have the luxury of having that much space in your home. And that is, you know, our, our, our guest room is a room that we, I open up just enough for Tilly to go chill in there. Um, and then our closet is just for Tilly. And then she's got shelves and spaces that are just hers where she can escape and feel safe. And it sounds like Allie and James are doing that same thing, which is so freaking cool and responsible. So, um, NYC girl says James got the dog with her and was in the house with him for at least a year. I guess he didn't think of training then. Ugh, I doubt, I think both of them didn't do right by Graham in those early days, they're, you know, more interested in throwing, like getting drunk and having puppy showers or something. So yeah. Uh, time says I'm currently fostering my husband. I hope that works out and you end up wanting to keep him. But if you don't just find him another foster family, you know, that would be great. Okay. My baby Teddy is, um, giving me the look like it's time, mom. It's time. You said you didn't even like this episode of the damn show, so we can definitely get our walk in. You guys have been amazing, wonderful, fantastic, great, beautiful pumpkin spice babies, and I appreciate all of your wonderful. Yes, that's how you spell Tilly. Thank you, Sue B. Tilly, they say you're you're gorgeous. She is. She's the queen bee in the house, and I I always say everyone just answers to Tilly. She's the boss, applesauce, and that's just how it is. We all answer to Tilly, and it's a dictatorship, and Tilly is. The dictator, right, Cheech? Yeah, she's a sweet little girl. So um, thank you guys so much. Shout out to everyone watching live. Smash that like if you haven't already. Thank you for all the love and the super chats and uh, the membership. Thank you, Molly, Jen, Chickenhead, um, Jen again, Kirsten, Alex, Steven, Chickenhead again, Kathy, uh, Shawnee, thank you guys so much. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. We have Beverly Hills. I still have to catch up on last week's episode of Beverly Hills because we have the um, Housewives of Beverly Hills uh, reunion that's going to be starting. Because tomorrow is the season finale, I think, which is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I'll be going live with more No Offense, All Offense, the pop culture live stream that we do and have fun. So I hope you guys, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful night, day, morning. And like I say, always remember to enjoy yourself. Right, Tilly? Because it's later than you think. Also, Tom Sandoval's a dick. Bye.